So when a lot of people think about gamers, this image comes to their mind. However, the best gamer of today doesn't look like this, but like this. They are not geeks anymore, but they are, have become real stars. Let's stay with Reckless, for example. Reckless and his team earns millions every year in prices, advertising, streaming, transfer, player transfer. Um, the last Dota 2 tournament had a price pool of $20 million. Imagine if we could invest in those players in order to have a percent on their future revenue. Julie is a stock market to invest in esports players and team. Julie works similar to NASDAQ. Users can buy and sell shares, and their value changes according to supply and demand. We use the blockchain technology to automate the investment process. So every player generates some tokens that represent their shares, and those tokens can be traded within the platform. We keep a 3% of every token and a 10% of every investment in the platform. Esport is one of the markets with the biggest growth in the last few years, from 400 million to almost 1,000 in less than two years. Tournaments like the one I told you before, the Dota 2 tournament, has price pool bigger than Wimbledon or Super Bowl. Our users, our clients, are both esport fans and small investors. It is important to notice that even having that huge amount of funds, the market still generates less than $1 million. That means the investment possibilities are endless because those funds have just started being monetized. For sure, we have competitors. There are crowdfunding sites for esports. There are business angels and VCs already investing in teams. And there are also betting sites. But in Duly, we allow the fans to be the investors. And instead of betting on a particular match, they can invest in their favorite players. Right now, we are already connecting teams and investors manually. We have launched a proof of concept with virtual coins that we, we got 3,000 registered users within the first month. And we have achieved some partnerships with uh, big companies in the US and South Korea in order to reach those markets. We are also part of the Draper Venture Network portfolio. This is the team making all of this possible. Uh, this is the second project we launched in the eSports industry. With the first project, we launched an online uh, magazine for gamers that reached 30,000 users in less than four months. And this is our advisory board. Uh, among them, we have the CEO of one of the biggest eSports team in Europe. Uh, he also invested in the project. Now we are going to launch a proof of concept in China and South Korea. We are getting ready an ICO for February in order to have the first tier one player pool in the spring. It is time to invest in Julie because the best teams are already working with us, because the market is growing extremely fast, and because we are based in a technology that is about to change the world. Thank you. And thank you, Alberto. Time for the questions. Thanks, Alberto. So if I invest in a team, what do I, what do I get? Apart from the tokens and speculative potential upside. Yeah, for sure. Okay, for teams, we have for small team, you can invest just in the future revenue. So when they have a sponsor deal or any uh, image right deals, you get a percent. But for bigger teams, we also allow them to invest in the transfer rates of the players. So when a player is transferred, pretty much like football, you get a percent of the transfer price. So we reduce the risk of the, of the team when they are buying a new player, and you get your money back if the player is transferred. Uh, successfully. Mm -hmm. and, and what do the players get? Uh, the, players, uh, the players get the money in order to grow exponentially. And when the player comes along without the team, we also give them a marketing agency because uh, players are so young to get the money, they don't know what to do with them. So we give the money uh, to them, but it's kept in for a marketing agency that helps them develop the audience. At the end, eSport is about competition, but the money is not in the competition itself. It's all around making content, create a great audience around. So the players get the money to grow fast. And and is, is, that, is that kind of regulatory-wise yes. le legit? Because I know you can't do that in football, for instance, in the UK, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, it's, if you are talking like uh, FIFA, for example, it's not the same here because they are, they are not considered like a sport yet. Uh, but there, we have regulatory issues. That right now, we just allow uh, investors, like regulated investors to invest. In order to do it for uh, all the funds, we are uh, in the middle of getting a crowdfunding li license. With a crowdfunding license, we we can do that. And the facility that blockchain gives us is like when you buy a percent of the player, you can just resell the token within the platform to everyone. 
So you're planning to do an ICO. Are you also planning to do an equity round, or how should we think about this? Yes, we are, this? we are in the middle of an equity round. Uh, uh, we already have uh, 100,000 in a convertible node, and we are about to close another 200,000. The ICO is not going to be like this typical ICO because we don't want to be considered a security in the ICO. So it would be done once the platform is finished. So the tokens will be uh, spread out for free. And once the user comes to the platform to use the token, then it's when the, the user is going to, to buy, to pay. So the token cannot be used to speculate. You mentioned 3,000 users your first month. I don't know when you launched, but wh what have you learned from that? Uh, okay, we launched like uh, last month and a half, and the, the, the proof of concept is with virtual coins. So what we learned is like mostly teams have bigger problems than uh, players. Uh, and also that our users weren't teenagers as we were expecting, but were people from 25 uh, to, 30, to 35 more or less. And they were willing to spend a ticket much higher than the one we consider, around 80, 90 euros. And we were considering five euros. Mm -hmm. So you briefly mentioned some regulatory issues in other sports, like the regular old school sports. Is there any? area where you could envision this in like beyond or outside the esports scene yes we are actually also working with a streamer and youtubers so everyone that can uh, take some money and make profit and we would like to spend to sporting later but sport is more difficult because there's more competitors and because uh, it's quite more hard because of the regulators so that's the reason we want to start with esports mm -hmm. more questions so if we don't have any more questions, then we are moving.